In this video we're going to look at differentiation, maxima and minima. As usual you can find some exam questions in this video's description to try afterwards. Now in the previous video we looked at this function here. We saw how the black sections were increasing, therefore they had a positive gradient and dy by dx was greater than zero. And also the red sections were decreasing, they had a negative gradient and dy by dx was less than zero. But what about the points where it switches from positive to negative? Or from negative to positive? So right at the top of the curve here, or right at the bottom of the curve here? Well if you draw a tangent to these, the tangent will be completely horizontal. Therefore the gradient is zero, so dy by dx must equal zero. These points are given a special name, we call them stationary points. So let's take a curve, and in this question we're asked to find the coordinates of the stationary points. So when we have stationary points, we know that dy by dx equals zero. So let's find dy by dx. Well for this one, dy by dx, we've got x cubed, so if you differentiate that you get 3x squared. Differentiating negative 6x squared gives you negative 12x. Differentiating plus 9x gives you plus 9, and the plus 1 constant differentiates to give 0. So we know this must equal 0, so we write 3x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals 0, and then we solve this equation. This one's a quadratic, there's a common factor of 3 here, so you can divide 3 by 3 on both sides. If you divide on the left, you get x squared minus 4x plus 3, and on the right, 0 divided by 3 is just 0. You can now factorise this one, it would be x take 1, x take 3 equals 0, and this gives you two solutions for x, x equals 1 and x equals 3. Now we have to be careful, it didn't ask us for the x coordinate, it asked us for the coordinates, so we need to get the y value as well. To do this we'll substitute our x values back into the equation of the curve, so y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 1. So we'll start with x equals 1, when x equals 1, y equals x cubed, so 1 cubed, minus 6x squared, so minus 6 lots of 1 squared, plus 9x, so plus 9 lots of 1, and then plus 1. 1 cubed is just 1, 1 squared is 1, so negative 6 times 1 is negative 6, 9 times 1 is just 9, and if you simplify all of this, you'll get 5. Now we'll substitute in the other point, when x was equal to 3. So for this one we do 3 cubed, take away 6 lots of 3 squared, plus 9 lots of 3, plus 1. 3 cubed is 27, 3 squared is 9, and if you times this by negative 6, you get negative 54, 9 times 3 is 27, and if you simplify all of this, you'll find a y value of 1. So we found that when x equals 1, y equals 5, so we have the coordinate of stationary point 1, which is 1, 5, and then when x equals 3, y equals 1, so we have the coordinate of the second stationary point, which is 3, 1. This is a sketch of the curve y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 1, and you can see we have our two stationary points, this one here, which was coordinates 1, 5, and this one here with coordinates 3, 1. We would say that the point with coordinates 1, 5 is a local maximum point, because it reaches a maximum and then comes back down again. We would say that the point 3, 1 is a local minimum point, because it reaches a minimum and then goes back up again. What we need to be able to do is identify if these points are maxima or minima, but without drawing out the graph. Now you can do this just using differentiation. When you find dy by dx, which we've called the gradient function, you're actually finding what we call the first derivative. Now you can find d2y by dx squared, which is the second derivative. To find d2y by dx squared, you differentiate the gradient function, so you differentiate a second time. You could think of the gradient function as the rate of change of y with respect to x, but you could think of d2y by dx squared as the rate of change of the gradient with respect to x. So how can this be used to tell if it's a maximum or a minimum point? Well let's take the point right in the bottom left hand corner, and we're going to move right along the graph and consider what's happening to the gradient. So right now the gradient is a positive value because it's sloping up, and it's also very steep, so a very high number. As we begin to move along the curve, the gradient starts to decrease. It's still positive here, but it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it reaches the top, and now the gradient is zero. As we move past this maximum point, the gradient turns negative, and then it becomes more and more negative as the line becomes steeper and steeper. 
So as we go past the maximum point, you can see the gradient is actually decreasing all of the time. It starts positive, it becomes zero, and then it turns negative. This means that if we're at a maximum point, the value of d2y by dx squared will be less than zero. So if d2y by dx squared is less than zero, we have a maximum point. Now if we continue on on this journey, at the moment the gradient's negative, and it's becoming less and less steep, so it's actually getting closer and closer to zero. And then it reaches zero at the bottom, and as we go past this minimum point, the gradient switches to positive, and then becomes larger and larger and larger as the graph gets steeper. So as we went past the minimum point, the gradient started negative, went to zero, and then became positive. So the rate of change of gradient with respect to x is actually positive. This means if d2y by dx squared is greater than zero, we have a minimum point. Let's see how we can apply this to a question. So we have this curve here, and first of all we want to find the coordinates of the stationary point, and then we want to determine its nature. When it uses the word nature in the question, it refers to maximum or minimum. So let's find the stationary point first. We know when we have a stationary point, dy by dx must equal zero. So let's differentiate. If we differentiate 4x squared, we get 8x. And if we differentiate x to the power negative 1, we get negative x to the power negative 2, which we may rewrite in a fraction form. Now we know this must equal zero. To solve this one, I'm going to times both sides by x squared. If you times x squared on the left, you get 8x cubed. The x squared will cancel with the x squared on the bottom of the fraction, so just take away 1, and x squared times 0 is 0. Now if you add 1 to both sides and divide by 8, you'll get x cubed equals 1 eighth. And if you cube root 1 eighth, you'll find x equals a half. Now we have the x coordinate, but we also need the y coordinate. So we'll substitute that back into the original equation of the curve, y equals 4x squared plus x to the power negative 1. So at x equals 1 half, y would equal 4 lots of 1 half squared plus 1 over 1 half. 1 half squared is a quarter, and times that by 4 gives you 1. And then 1 divided by a half is 2. So we have 1 plus 2, which equals 3. So the coordinates of the stationary point are 1 half, 3. Now we need to do part B, we need to determine its nature. Remember the nature is just if it's a maximum or a minimum. To do this we're going to find the second derivative, d2y by dx squared. To find this you just differentiate the first derivative. So on the left we have dy by dx equals 8x minus 1 over x squared, we just need to differentiate this. To make this easier we'll rewrite 1 over x squared as x to the power negative 2. So to differentiate 8x you get 8, and if you differentiate negative x to the power negative 2, you do negative 2 times negative 1, which is positive 2, and then reduce the power of x from negative 2 to negative 3, which again we'll write back in its fraction form. Now we need to substitute in the x coordinate of our stationary point. Our stationary point had coordinates 1 half 3, so we'll substitute in x equals 1 half. So at x equals 1 half, d2y by dx squared would equal 8 plus 2 over 1 half cubed. 1 half cubed equals 1 eighth for 0 0.125, and 2 divided by 0 0.125 gives you 16. So we have 8 plus 16, which makes 24. Now this is positive, so d2y by dx squared is positive. When it's positive at a stationary point, we have a minimum point. If it were negative, it would have been a maximum point. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the exam questions in the video's description, what I think you should watch next, and also subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.